there i've seen several i mean I, i've gone in sam's club and i think they have like that old-fashioned they're like doing reissues of record players so yeah. i mean who knows maybe maybe lps or you know they'll, they'll make a comeback which i'd like yeah. to see that yeah they're, they're, they're definitely making a comeback i mean they just announced the other day that sony's actually gonna start up their presses again and oh shit, so. that good good yeah good. so that'll hopefully i mean it's so expensive now to to buy new vinyl i mean it's anywhere from 12 dollars to 49 bucks but if you're gonna do a low run, that's the best way to do it because you're yeah. gonna you're gonna sell them out because people are gonna right now. If you do it, I think you would you'd have a good turnout for yeah, it. So. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing too. You know, do fifty and done. You know, don't even have any intention. I don't care if they sell out in two days. I'm not gonna do any more presents. Right, right. No, that's 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 what makes that. I would jump on it if you said there's only fifty. I'd be the first one there. Right. Once. Well, thanks, man. <laughs> but uh. So tell me about some of the shows that are coming up now. You're you're doing bookings now, so you have your your company is gonna tell me about that. Yeah, oh, I forgot about that. Uh, yeah, Negative Image Entertainment. Uh, basically, I started it as a way to market my band back in the day, uh, back in two thousand, um, and I used it, of course, you know, to uh, play like the big dogs out there of and course. uh you know nobody knows who your band is they're not going to book you however if uh if i'm not raven chain from sister kill cycle i'm so and so from negative image entertainment group they might listen and it worked it worked so yeah i've done the same thing in the past get your foot in the door um so i ran it for years and you know i did a, a bunch of charity work and charity shows uh including booking ourselves other artists and stuff like that and then it just, you know, Sister Kill Cycle started taking off like really big in 2005. I, I just did not have time for it. And, you know, we I went with Sister Kill Cycle and put it on the back burner. And just recently with this time off and getting back, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start my company. I'm going to start working again. Uh, our music scene sucks. I, I just have to say that. Uh, there's no variety anymore and there's a lack of quality entertainment out there and something i want to do is bring people quality entertainment you can go to any bar here locally and hear you know tommy fudrucker with an acoustic guitar singing about you know conway sure. twitty songs and you know what have you nothing against conway twitty no, but <laughs> you know i want somebody who is an artist to come in and entertain people like you know when i was younger seeing there's a band from new york you're from new york you probably yeah. remember i'm uranium 235 oh, absolutely shane yeah yep these guys came and they stomped your ass they had such a high energy show for the entire hour they were on stage and they were talented musicians they had the look they had the lights the energy and I was blown away when I yeah, saw him too. the first time in Huntington, West Virginia, with uh, opening for Typo Negative. I was blown away, and I was like, I fell in love with them. I bought their CD right then. Um, Cultural minority. Oh yeah, F fucking great! Really yeah. good cover of "You love Spin it. Me Right Round" yeah. on there too. Um, that inspires me when I see that, and I don't see that anymore. I see all these musicians are so good. They're so talented. But, you know, which 11-year-old picking up a guitar can't just play Steve? I mean, it seems like all these GMOs are putting in the food. They can play. These kids can play. <laughs> it's like everybody can play now. But, you know, bring me some entertainment. I want to be entertained. I want that I want them that shiver of Alice Cooper coming out on stage doing the guillotine. Uh, you know, the, the kiss bigger than life standing up there just you know making you beg for them a lot of these these bands i mean i made a comment on the on facebook a couple of weeks ago that kind of blew up a little bit because some of these bands i mean they they get up on stage or their promo picks they look like they just got done unloading a truck at walmart yep I, it's it, it's not going to get you anywhere you have to they, take these steps to market yourself and look like a like a band if you want to call yourselves the unloaders or something yeah right you're yeah. unloading trucks at walmart it's all good i had one guitarist in one of my bands who showed up for a photo shoot and it looked like he got done digging grapes and i'm like dude man you gotta buy new sh i go you can't 
<laughs> he was so mad he wound up quitting the band. But, I mean, if you can't show up to a photo shoot with fucking decent looking clothes on for, you know, this is for our album, man. You look ridiculous. Well, I mean, and again, I mean, these these people, they just, they don't get it. I mean, that that's the thing. You have to know this industry. You have to know what you're doing. You're, you're Yes, you're a musician, but you're going out in public. You're getting on stage. You're trying to get people to buy your CDs. You're no longer a musician. Now you're an artist. Now you're an entertainer, and you have to entertain people. Wearing blue jeans and fucking sneakers on stage ain't going to get you nowhere. No, That's your, your neighbor down the street looks just like that, and he plays just as good. Trust me. I've heard him. Yep. I, so, I hear you. you know, I mean, why am I going to come see you on stage? Just because you're cool? You know, we're all equal. You know, this because you know, you got a hundred friends that are going to come to see you, and those are the same hundred people that are going to come see you if the if the hundred people show up. Right. Exactly. And it's the same people at every every single show. So it's like that. That's what makes you guys always stand out. I mean, that's what drew me to you guys when I first came down to Florida and seen you guys. I'm like, these guys are fucking cool as fuck. Right. But I mean, cause you, you, you're doing, you know, you might be playing a local bar down the block or when bourbon street was here, but you, you played it like it was rock and roll every single time you put on a show. That's how I wake up every day, Jay. Not, not that you would just got off of work throwing garbage cans on the back of a truck. And now it's time to go do my other job. Right. No, no. I, and, and like I said, that's, that's my life. I live it every day. Every day is a rock show. I mean, when I meet people and I do shows like this, you know, it's, it's about entertaining people. I mean, uh, you always entertain me, so we always have a good time together. Yeah, well, and uh, we haven't even started drinking yet. <laughs> but uh, when you uh, film the new videos and stuff, are you going to do what you did in the past? Like, because I, I was part of a couple of your videos back yeah. when you were releasing it. So are you going to call out to the fans and stuff again? Uh, we we are thinking about doing uh, another live type video uh, where we we do it in a live setting and and have the fans and for one of them. But I think with the state of the world right now and everything that's going on and all this, I don't even know if we have a long enough segment to speak about all this stuff. But yeah, you know, just the the world is a fucked up place it right really now, is. and I, agree. I want to reflect some of that back to to people so it's going to be it's going to be very artsy it's going to be very in your face to the point i mean we're we're going to some of these songs we're focusing on a lot of touchy subjects you know um i think uh this whole new pronoun thing is uh it, it's getting pretty big and i don't understand it there is no longer he and she People identify as it, they, and theirs. And, uh, you know, I'm going to start identifying as a brick because my dad said you're so hard-headed. You're like a brick <laughs> fucking wall. So oh. I'm no longer he. I'm going to be brick. That's fine. See, does, it, does that make fucking sense? Hey, I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here, and it does not make any sense. I'm not trying to hurt anyone's feelings and, uh, you know, not understand or relate. But come on. This... This yuppie culture that we got going on right now, enough's enough, you know. With the man buns and oh, sh <laughs> rompers. Yeah, I, I I thought that was a joke at first. I thought somebody just put that together, and I thought it was a joke going around on the internet. But no, lo and behold, it is true. You can now be an adult, forty-three year old man running around in a diaper and a onesie. <laughs> It's 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 amazing. I mean, and then between that and the violence, I mean, yeah, you're a big gun fan, so. Oh yeah, totally a big, huge gun fan. I mean, I didn't, I wasn't always that way. Believe it or not, you know, I grew up in a very military household. Uh, my father fought in Korean War and absolutely hated guns. Would not have a gun in the house, uh, so. The only interaction I had with guns is like my cousins and stuff that were, you know, kind of hill rednecks. So right. we'd go around and, and shoot 22s and 38s and stuff like that. And uh, it wasn't until I, one of my jobs I had uh, for Wells Fargo, I actually had to carry a gun. 
So uh, once I got to that point and started learning a little bit about guns and they're not so scary and dangerous, uh, then I, I really I really enjoyed them because here here we have a mechanical device that is built to withstand destruction. I mean, every time you pull the trigger, an explosion's going off in this piece of machinery, and it's not blowing up in your face. So it, it, it's interesting to me. I, I like machines. I like science and stuff like that. So. I hear you. Do you carry now? Or? Of course, every single day, twenty four seven. I even carry when I go to the bathroom. See, that's what I try to explain to her. I mean, it's, you know, and, and I run a cash business, too. So it, I'm to the point where I'm seeing all of the shit going down with violence. And, you know, I'm in bad neighborhoods. I feel like the only thing that scares me is I don't think I'd be afraid to use it in a certain situation. And Well, that's that's a good thing. I mean, if you're not yet, yet. I always tell people this, and there's this old saying, it's better to be judged by 12 than carried by six. When you're in a situation, and I have growing up, I mean, you know, going to, to back in New York in, in the days I started touring around and some Arkansas, some places in this country, you get beat up. There's no question about it. You get beat up. There, it just happens. And until you've been, you know, broke with a dollar twenty five in your pocket, just enough money to get on the bus to drive 20 miles back home. And somebody comes up and surrounds you and says, ah, motherfucker, looks like your ass is walking tonight. Don't tell me about how violence is not the answer. No, I, I, I hear you. I mean, it's it's definitely fucked up. I mean, even with concerts, I mean, we're, we're going the metallic. I mean, th that thought runs through my head now. I mean, it shouldn't. I'm, I'm not scared to go to the concert, but I mean, it's just like getting on a plane. You're going to. Everybody thinks at one point is this bitch going down, right? So, I mean, I, you know, I think about this stuff. I mean, and then I'm like, well, you know, Metallica is touring the country that nothing's happened yet, right? But you never know. And then you think, well, it's in Orlando, and there's been several shootings there in the past year. It's like, you know, you you got to think about it. You got to be conscious of it. Uh, so. And and let's not forget, you know, I mean, it's. It's not been that long ago that some crazy fuck walked up into a show and killed Don Bag Daryl on stage while right. performing. You know, would it have been different if one of those country Texans would have been carrying? Maybe. I don't know. I can't say that for sure. But if somebody was able to carry a gun in that place... They wouldn't have had to wait for the police and right. everybody to get there, but you know, and so many people wouldn't have got hurt. He may have not died. Right. I mean, when I was in my band in New York, I mean, I, I was a little bit out of control at the shows, and then when that happened, I, I I reflected on that and said, you know, a lot of people, I piss a lot of people off. I yeah. said, you know, that that some someone could really take me too serious and come to my next show and and fucking shoot me. Right. So I mean, I tamed it down a lot. I mean, I mean, she can vouch for the the crazy antics. I mean, that was just part of the thing. I mean, I came from that same era that you know, yep. growing yep. up, Marilyn Manson, all of that shit. So that that I wanted my shows to be as intense. Uh, yeah, and, over the top. Yeah, I mean, I mean, and that's it. Yeah, that's again, that's somebody that that would be listening on the other end of the show and not like what we have to say. Right. In exactly. our conversation, you know, to come to shoot one of us, you know, whichever one pissed him off at the time. Right. I mean, that's that's a little extreme. And, uh, you know, it's both sides of the coin. You, you get these people and they want to be able to say whatever the hell they want, whenever they want. But if you go over the top about something they are passionate about, right. they want to do violence to you. Right. So. It's like it's like road rage. I mean, it's the people at. You you accidentally cut someone off, which they're weaving in and out of traffic, doing it to people. But you you did it to them. Now they're pissed off and they want to fucking start a fight with you on the road. Oh yeah, it's yeah. like I I mean, but it's ridiculous. But it gets you thinking. I mean, to to go out and do shows like that. I mean, it's it's got to cross people's minds. I mean, it definitely crosses mine going out. I mean, you know, these small clubs in St. Pete. I mean, it's only a, a matter of time before it. It hits home. It, yeah, exactly. And and you know those those people in Orlando did not think when they were going out that night that that was.